Hey there, so in this video I'm going to talk about IQ versus EQ. Now, I will be using an, using an article as my base for this video, but I do want to state that I've used a lot of articles and they all seem to be quite extreme. Like, you know, IQ will guarantee this and EQ will guarantee this. I don't completely agree with that, but I will tell you the website I'm referencing. And it's keydifferences.com. Uh, there should be a link below in this video. I'll put that in there. Um, yeah, and I'm going to run you through the differences. So let's begin. So they have they have a little comparison chart, which I think is quite cool. Um, and we'll start with the IQ. So it's basically saying it's a measurement using standardized intelligence tests. That's how they measure IQ. Um, of logical reasoning. Now, you know, this is going to help your learning, your knowledge, how you apply that to problems. Very practical, very problem solving. Um, I guess you could say more thing based in a sense and not so much people based. Um, but yeah, gen generally problem solving, problem solving, logical, you know, your general intelligence. That's what it is a measure of. Um, they're saying the acquisition, they're saying it's an inborn ability. Um, I think I would, you know, definitely agree with that. I did read somewhere briefly saying, you know, you can increase your IQ. I don't know if that's true. Um, you can definitely inhibit it. You can definitely lower your IQ. Um, I believe, you know, if you don't get the right nutrition growing up or <coughs> you might not fully developed to um, the IQ you were meant to have or you know if you have a head injury um, I guess if you use drugs too much um, yeah you could you can definitely lower your IQ I think it's quite hard to increase your IQ beyond um, that natural cap or natural limit you have um, and here it talks about ability learn understand and implement knowledge logical reason and the abstract thinking abstract thinking so there you go kind of that practical knowledge and it says it ensures success in school i i mean i don't think anything can really ensure anything um i think that's a bit literal i mean i think uh iq determines your exam success um with a relationship of 0.6 i think the other 0.4 is conscientiousness I think the other 0.4 is conscientiousness, but anyway, all, all I'm trying to say is that, you know, you might have a really IQ, high IQ, but let's say you're really disagreeable. Um, you might get kicked out of school. So yeah, I don't see how just a high IQ can guarantee your success in school. I mean, I understand what they're trying to say. Like it can, you'll probably learn better, learn quicker, be able to apply that knowledge, but you know, you have to be exposed to it to some extent. I mean, no matter how intelligent you are, if you were never exposed to um, anything, you're not going to get an opportunity to learn. I mean, you will be able to interpret some things, but I think, you know, I think you have to be exposed to it. And I think it just means you learn it better, can apply these thoughts better. I mean, you will still just have a general, better um, logical reasoning because of your higher IQ. Um, and it, it recognizes people with high intellect, common sense, mental challenges. So yeah, it's very like thing based, problem based, um, not really focused um, <coughs> on on people. And I think they're implying success in school, but maybe not success in life because they're trying to say like how if you can't connect with people, you won't do as well. But anyway, I I think this site is um wrong because you can have a high IQ and high EQ, I believe. Um, and looking at it briefly, they do seem to be even correlated like if you have a higher IQ you might have a higher EQ but anyway let's jump on to EQ emotional intelligence so this according to them is the emotional intelligence you know measured by a standardized test um, they're trying to say it's learned and improved I mean I guess you could practice your social skills and get better um, but then again you could say that about a topic you could get better at a topic even if your IQ is set. So I don't 
I mean, I disagree. I think some people are born with higher or lower emotional intelligence. Now, I don't know this for true, but for sure. But, you know, I remember hearing about how people with autism might not pick up on social cues as well. I mean, they're not going to someone. So you could argue someone with autism might not have as high emotional intelligence as someone who doesn't. So, I mean, I know from my own experience, you can just you just know some people who are a bit more socially aware and caring. And I just don't think that is necessarily learned and improved. Like maybe it can be, but I think there's some natural component there. Um, <clears throat> the ability, it says, recognize, control, and express one's own emotions, perceive and assess others' emotions. So it's very people-based. It's very, you know, social. But how can you understand others? Do you interact with them well? Do you understand what they're saying? How can you implement that? Um, yeah. And, that, and then it says it ensures success in life, which, again, I think they're being too literal here. Um, you can't say that because someone might have really high emotional intelligence, you know, and be really agreeable, which I think would probably make them more likely to have that emotional intelligence because they're people based, I'm assuming. Um, but they might be, I'm assuming that's correct, but they might be really neurotic. Let's say someone's crippling uh crippled with neuroticism and they don't want to leave the house and they're too scared to talk to anyone then they aren't guaranteed success in life but they could have really high emotional intelligence so i think what they're trying to say here is that if you have emotional intelligence <coughs> you know i think it's that whole like oh wow well, you have book smarts book smarts but you don't have street smarts you, you can have both um i don't see why you have to have one or the other and you know, it doesn't guarantee success in life. But yeah, if you are more social, you get on better with people, you understand people better, it is going to help you and people are going to like you more. Um, you know, I guess even if you use that in a malicious way, you can manipulate people or you can just be genuine. So it doesn't matter whether it's, I guess, necessarily a good or bad intent. Like it's just, can you can you read that? Can you understand what people are saying? Um, yeah, and if you know what's going on and you can help people or you relate people to better, it can help and you know it says it recognizes leaders captains managers people with social challenges i mean this is poorly they're all pretty poorly written in my opinion all these articles but that's the that's a general difference um just skimming through here it does talk a little bit more about um the differences um i think they're a bit too literal and they're kind of like taking a negative spin on certain things but so to, just to summarize it myself Yes, you have IQ, you have, um, it's kind of given to you when you're born, um, it's very practical, you will learn stuff quicker, um, yeah, you will be more intelligent, you have a general level of intelligence, you can apply that to problem solving, but then you can also have a really high EQ, you can also have a really low IQ and low, uh, low EQ, I don't think there, I don't think you have to have one or the other, but I think people who don't have a high IQ, probably like to imply that. I think that's just um, like a wives tale or something. Um, yeah, so, and, you know, EQ, uh, emotional quotient, is, you know, all those other factors. Do you understand people's emotions, their intent, how they're feeling, can you help lead? Um, there's obviously other factors that are involved in being a leader. Uh, like confidence, um, and probably IQ as well is important. But yeah, um, yeah, that that's generally the difference. I hope that explains everything. I will put the link below. Feel free to look it up yourself. Um, this site or in general, there's not too much more to it. Um, I'm sure there's studies looking into how it can be applied, etc., and measured. But yeah, that's pretty much the main definition. I hope you like listening to this. And um, thanks.